if you don't have anybody to preach the gospel to, you need to preach the gospel to yourself. You want to know why? Because the devil's preaching his gospel to you all the time, and you're likely to believe it if you're anything like me. I am a legalist, and I tend to add things that are unnecessary to complicate matters and confuse my own heart. I don't even know if the devil has to help. I think I can do it on my own. But you know what? When I realize I'm doing it, I feel it. It's I feel the weight of the condemnation, and I start to struggle with assurance of salvation, and I shouldn't. And it's because I let myself complicate things. How did I do that? By adding requirements. Now, what you do is when you start to realize that you've got yourself into a pit and you are questioning which way is up or down, is you go back and remember, how did you get saved? And here's the secret. You tell yourself. You tell yourself how you got saved. Here's how I got saved. And you know what? If you're saved, this is how you got saved too. One day, you believed that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and that God raised him from the dead. Wait, what else? Oh, guess what? There is nothing else. That's what saved you. The message came announcing that Jesus, the Son of God, in whom the Father is well pleased, the beloved Son who lived his life fully for the Father's satisfaction and lived a completely righteous, spotless, and sinless life, offered that life up on the cross because he loved you and he loved me and he loved every other human being alive. And his blood was a satisfactory atonement for the sins of the world to make peace with God on our behalf. And God accepted that blood as payment for my sins and your sins. Now, we believed that at some level, as it may be even more simply, we just believed he died on the cross and his blood is the way we get to go to God. That's it. You don't need a theological degree and you don't even need to be a dispensationalist or a covenant Calvinist to believe that you can be a five-year-old and believe that and it's okay and you know what we need to learn to think about it like a five-year-old a five-year-old just says thank you that's pr-. actually no a five-year-old doesn't say thank you a five-year-old just takes it and goes on And takes it for granted. You know who's actually pleased when the five-year-old takes the gift? Not the five-year-old. He doesn't even know what he's got. The father that gave him the gift is the one that's pleased. Oh my, that's good. We believed the gospel and the father was pleased. We didn't even know what we got. We won't really understand until we see him and are standing right in his presence. Full knowledge. Then we'll be clear and we'll say, thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Jesus now, but it's almost like a pretend thank you, Jesus, because one day we're going to see Jesus and go, thank you, Jesus. And we're going to mean it because we're going to understand what he did. We get glimpses of it now, but you know what? We know in part. And the only thing we need to know and we really need to stand on is that Jesus died for our sins and was raised for our justification, and God accepted his blood as an atonement, as a, uh, as a satisfactory offering for all of our sins and awfulness. And all of this was done before we ever were even born and committed all the sins that he paid for. So that means that all of my future sins are paid for by the blood of Jesus. So it's not just the past sins before I got saved. No, because you know what? Unfortunately, I keep sinning. Unfortunately, it doesn't stop because I still have this flesh. But one day, I'm going to be delivered from this flesh. And I'm going to stand in his presence 
in my new incorruptible body that he created for me. And I'm going to say, thank you, Jesus. And I'm going to really mean it. Right now, the father's the one saying, thank you, Jesus, and really meaning it. And we're saying, thank you, Jesus, and kind of pretend meaning it. But when we get to see him face to face, we're going to mean it. Thank you, Jesus.